Yo, Wagwan, Ekaro, Bonjour. Good day, mate. <laughs> All good. All languages around the world. <laughs> That's my roundup. Anyway, good evening, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. This is your guy again, DLG Repping. You know what time it is, yeah? Half eight? Hmm. Hope you guys are tuning in, yeah? Today, um, I'd like to start us off with, um, yeah, I'll just get out of the way. And it's, um, something to do with, um, fuck's sakes, get out of here. Oh, you fucking hell, fuck, I forget. Sorry about that, yeah. Something to do with um, this beef that's amongst our fans, basically. Like, for example, now I've got nothing against anybody, you know. Like, realist, I big up your, I big up you, I say big up yourself, and I big you up, yeah, because you're doing your thing. But you've got your differences with Robbie Lee Gunner. I've heard you hit out on Turkish and Claude. Okay. I've seen your videos. Uh, but, you know, I agree with your points on one thing. I agree with um, one of your points on a couple of points that you've made. One of the, the main point that I agree with is Stan Kroenke out. Yes. Stan Kroenke out. You know, I, I'm not too sure about the um, situation with Arsenal going downhill. I don't think it's the problem is that deep for us to not go downhill and start competing again. There is money at the club, you know. Why would there not be no money at the club? Now, tell me. We take the highest revenue on the turnstiles. The boxes... Oh, you're talking at least a couple of grand... Per game. Now, I don't care what anyone says. No one's telling me that there's no money at our football club. You know, there's no money. There is more than enough money for us. We're inside or within the top 10 richest clubs in the world of football. So I don't know how anyone can tell me that we have not got no money on. We've not got no money at the football club. I mean, you know what? You can leave your comments below and um, for everybody else, please subscribe to my channel, thumbs up, like all the way, more than down and yeah, you know it is man. But other than that, um, let me think, read my thing there. Yeah, that's my little, um, well, that's my little um, talk about... Um, the financial side of things. I'm no accountant. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm just an Arsenal and football fan talking to you guys openly. But um, before I get on to that, you know, you know, we get on to the fact a um, couple of days ago, Boris Johnson and Matt Hancock tested positive for coronavirus. I mean, these are two high pe high profile people on coronavirus, you know. Man, this situation is real sickening, real sickening. You know, Boris Johnson, who locked down shops and locked down the whole country, basically. And he's caught it, you know. And I see on my TV how he's sitting there at home. Looking, well, not looking, but looking to recover. But sitting down, um, talking about his experiences of um, contracting the coronavirus. I mean, he's done all he could. I mean, to be fair, whether he should be prime minister or, or not, we'll leave that to another time. But however, yes, he has come... Um, come up ill and so with Matt, um, Han Matt Hancock and another high profile gentleman who I've forgotten the name of 
but someone can leave that on the someone can drop that in the comment below. I'll really appreciate it and I'll get back to you on that. And I'm happy to talk. You know. Other than that, uh I'm starting to have my doubts now about the football. Yes, uh There's only a little part in me that believes that the Football Association who deals with the Premier League and grassroots, etc. They're going to make a major decision and I dread the the worst decision that can be made for us to um, not continue the season. Meaning it could be null and it could be null and um, void. And I did have a go at Karen, Karen Brady about it, you know. And if I did um, insult Karen Brady, then I'll be the first to say it right here, right now, that I would like to apologise for insulting her. Yes, I disagreed with um, what she said, but if I, if there was a part of me in that video that insulted her and Karen Brady, I mean, not just West Ham fans, but any anyone, football fans, come on to come on to my um, channel, leave your Drop your comments below, and uh, I'll have a conversation with you. As long as it, as long as it's respectful, I'm prepared to have a com conversation with you guys. All good, because football is in my heart, right here, and it'll be so such an uh, an amazing relief to continue and finish off this season. And you know, I do miss the moaning. I do miss the um, moan ups on the talk sport and on AFTV even. <laughs> Yeah, it's all good. Good banter. You know, even when Arsenal lose, I ain't going to lie. I'm the first one to get onto Arsenal fan TV and um, have, a, have a bit of a giggle because without that, I'd end up angry and depressed and I don't need to be angry and depressed. Football is everything to me, but it's not the Bill or end all, if you get what I'm saying. Another thing I would like to talk about... Uh, I've spoken about um, the, the Arsenal beef and yeah, I'm going to speak more about it. I wish this Arsenal beef can just, this beef shit can just end. It's all bollocks. You have difference of opinion, but I'll, I'll give you, uh, listen, I'll shout out to you guys and I've already mentioned your names. Yeah. <sighs> Let's, look, we all Arsenal support. Let's support the team. Let's support the football club for the better. And I demand that you end this silly beef, because it is silly. But you know what? Big up yourselves. For those Arsenal fans who are known for coming on their fan channels and having a, an opinion on the club and the team. Yeah, big up yourselves. Yeah, keep doing your thing. And if you want, can you... And Well, not if you want, but I would like you to subscribe to my channel. Yeah, I've been doing it for two months, over a little over two months, and this is the 32nd video. If you can subscribe to me, then I appreciate it, yeah? And if I find out who you are, then I'll come on to the comment section and, yeah, um, have a conversation. That's what I'll entertain. As long as it's respectful, I'll definitely entertain it. You understand? Uh... Moving on to transfers gossip. I mean, Arsenal are in the race with Liverpool to sign Osman Dembele. Now, some will say, why would he come to us? We're ninth in the table. We haven't got a chance of playing Champions League football, whereas Liverpool could give him that. But this is a guy who's been proven injury. He's been injury prone, should I say. And there's been reports... It, coming out of the media or a source of some sort that he's got an attitude problem that he'd rather stay up late at night play PlayStation than when time for training in the morning he's not putting in the work that possibly could explain why he's got 19 goals in three in three years at Barcelona but he is a fucking exceptional talent I'll tell you that for free it's just I don't know if his discipline is negative, but getting him fit 
and and keeping him and keep and putting him into the first team on not just merit but based on his overall performances and if he flourishes week in week out wow like i said he's a fucking in, he's a fucking exceptional talent and he deserves he deserves a recognition you know i mean he did cost um, barcelona or barcelona should i say 120 odd million quid can someone um, give me the exact um, price that Barcelona paid for him? Again, leave that comment below. But yeah, he's an exceptional player. I mean, would I want him now? For 70 million, I'll go and get another centre half. You know, maybe squeeze it. And then, well, I don't know about squeezing the midfielder, but I'll, get, I'll definitely be going, going in for another centre half. And then. Whatever money we have in the account, let's go and strengthen the midfield a bit. Beef it up. It needs some beef and beefing up with with muscles. Give it that muscle and beef. Beef it up like bully beef, in it, Robbie Lyle. Big up yourself, yeah. I know you're doing your thing. Um, we've been linked with um Chris um Solar guy from Valencia. I've forgotten his first name. Good, good midfield, good midfield player, attacking one. Who would I like to see in my midfield? I would like to see a Thomas Partey. I would love, to, I would love Arsenal Football Club to help Mikel Arteta get Thomas Partey. I mean, words going around that um, Arteta has made made it clear that he would like to go in for um, Thomas Partey. So if that's the case, then Arsenal. Board of directors, let's make this happen. Raul Sanlihi, you got, you, you know, you got to show, you got to show, you got to show us um, why you were appointed um, as CEO. You know, you got links in in the Spanish football. You know the market very well, so you got to show us why you are the man for for our job as a chief executive. CEO, officer, that's it, chief executive officer. And don't get me wrong, I've got nothing against you. I like you as a gentleman. Hence the reason why I thought, let me take my picture with you and Edu. So, it's a big job though to, to bring in Thomas Partey if he wants to come to Arsenal. I mean, <laughs> he, he's sacrificing the realistic possibility of not playing Champions League football. But again, Arsenal Arsenal is a, a fantastic um, football club to play. They are a big club. Moving as if we we're a small club and we're not. Yeah, we've gone through crap. We've gone through it this season. And we, well, if the season was on, we'd all want it written off. But otherwise, I want us to finish the season so we can build... You know, build. And when I talk about build, I've, talk, I've spoken about um, Martinelli, the, um, what he brings to the team. I've spoken about him being a number nine, our next number nine. But again, speaking of number nines, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Now, we know that there is a coronavirus going around, but it don't escape the subject on you, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. You're well-loved. Amongst Arsenal fan base all over the world. But the reality is you've got 12 months left on your contract. Or over 12 months left on your contract to be precise. And it was said by the um, club, um, the board of directors. I think it was said by Raul Senlihi without trying to dig him out too much. I think Raul Senlihi said it or the board said it that if you've got, if you've got a minimum of um, two years left of your contract. You will be sold, and it's come to it's coming up to nearly a year left of his contract. And if he if he if he's if he's not going to say anything now and leave it until God knows when, then for me we should sell him. Let's get as much let's get as much as fifty million. Let's get a minimum of fifty million out of him, sell him, and let's use the money to um, bring in another attacker or bring in a left winger. You know, or do we go in for another striker? 
I don't... If, listen, if we don't go in for another striker, then I haven't got a problem with Eddie Nketiah starting games as a number nine. Or Martinelli, for that matter. But that would leave us with two strikers if we if we prefer to turn Martinelli into a striker. But for me, our defence needs um, a, a massive rebuilding. And, uh, yeah, our defence needs rebuilding massively. And I can see... I can see us going in for a right back, I believe, because we don't know how um, Cedric Suarez is going to plan out. Another centre half is going to be key, even though we've got um, Salabar coming back. Oh. <sighs> Depending on this um, disgusting, despicable curse that's hit us, how long until it ends? You know, it's all over the world. Will it end? Anytime soon. I mean, they're talking about resuming the Premier League on the 30th, but I can't see it. Uh, Yeah. Do we get another striker in? I mean, I'll be open for another striker if it makes sense. As long as we get... We need to build a defence. Another right back, centre back, one or two... Combative defensive midfield players and uh, yeah, some attack, some attacking players. But um, my question is with Martinelli: do you, do you guys see him as a left wing forward or a centre forward in the long haul? Where do you see Martinelli playing? Leave your comments below. Yeah, drop your comments below. Should I say? And um, I'll get back to you. I believe um, it's going to be it's going to be quite tough to um, think about getting players. But is it tough, or is it just being? Is it just negativity? I don't like being negative. You know, I've heard voices. I've heard voices and voices saying how tough it's going to be. To get players, oh, because of our situation of not being in the Champions League, we're um, going to struggle to get players. Maybe That may be the case, but maybe without European football, that will be the blessing in disguise that we need. So I just touched my, um, my, the edge of my nose. Guys, wash your hands afterwards, because I know I will be. <laughs> but, you know, we'll see. Other than that, we are at the football. It's not. It's not too bad. All is not too bad. Do your live streams. Do your live recordings, and um, I scream out loudly. Subscribe to my channel, and subscribe more to my channel, and drive the thumbs up like button. Hopefully, yeah. The more subscribers, hopefully, I'll get over get over the mark that I need, and. Um, when I say the mark, the target—I mean the, the target that I need, the amount of um, subscribers I need—I'll get that. Hopefully, I'll get that, and I can do some live streaming of my own and get some questions thrown at me that I will be happy to answer to the best of my full knowledge. Other than that, people, um, we stay at home, we keep safe, and save lives. And let's help the NHS people. They have done a fantastic job. They've done the best they could out of a poor situation. And um, I'll give it to them. I owe it all to them, you know. So, yeah, to my little um, half-sister, who is the baby sister, who I call my baby sister, keep in there, keep fighting strong, yeah? You will get through this. You will get through this, yeah? Other than that, yeah. Um, it's sad in that there is over 1,000... Over 1,028... Yeah, 1,028 people have died. You know, which is... Tragic. And every day, someone is guaranteed to be... And now it's dead. So it's always inevitable. 
it is hard. It's emotional. And again, um, let's try. And then, and like I said earlier, some of you Arsenal fans, well, I won't say some, but I've heard individuals bickering over nothing, beefing over nothing about this man got this man to say, exposing, trying to expose him for what he said or whatnot. Let's end it. You know, this don't need to be done. Oh, and another thing I like to clear. Yeah, um, I think I was listening to someone's um, channel. It was Realist, that's it, the Realist channel. And um, he was um, watching clips of um, Robbie interviewing Stricto. Big up yourself, um, Stricto, yeah? And at the background, there was a man swearing. It was me. Yeah, I swore... Well, I swore at this guy, or well, I swore at this guy because I was getting irritated of him just um, slagging off Arsenal fan TV left, right, and centre. So I went over there and confronted him and and told him exactly how it is because at the end of the day, we're watching the same game that you're watching, so we're trying to reflect on the same game that you've just watched. So yeah, it was me. It's not the. Um, I'm not really the regular AFTV um guy, but I'll try my best to try and get onto the channel. I ain't gonna lie. I would like to get onto the channel as much as I can. But you know what? We'll see when if the season resumes. Other than that, guys, yeah. Stay at home. Be safe. Save lives. And um, I'll see. Well, I'll see if I can get... No, I'll see what. And I'll be back with another... Yeah, I'll be back with another... Filming. Yeah? Thank you, guys, yeah? For letting me speak. And um, thank you for listening. Yeah? I'll tune in soon, yeah? Alright, it's your guy, DLG Repping. Peace and bless. Alright, let me...